dreamed about a wedding and going to the wedding and she'd always heard about weddings and 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 she finally got to go to a wedding and she was sitting there watching as the bride come down the aisle she's walking down the aisle in this pretty white dress with the long train huh so she's walking and the little girl's just in awe finally she looks over to her mom and says mom why is the bride wear white she says, well, white is the color of, of happiness and joy, and this is the happiest day of her life. She's day that she's getting married. So she walks down, and, and the bride gets there, and, and the groom turns, you know, and, and gets beside the bride, and the little girl gets this curious look on her face, and she's staring, and she's staring. She looks over, and she goes, Mom, how come the groom's wearing black? The ladies aren't laughing. <laughs> Since it's Memorial Day, I'm going to give you this one, too. I'll give you another one. It says that uh, there was this old, crouchy, tough Navy chief officer. And, and one of his, his sailors was getting, uh, they were getting ready to, he was going to retire. The old guy was going to retire. And, and, and this guy had been on this sailor and on this sailor and on this sailor. And he walked up to him and goes, well, I guess you're happy to see me retire, right? He said, I bet you when you get out, you're going to spend all your days just wondering and waiting for the day that I die that you can come and spit on my grave. Young sailor thought for a minute. He says, no, sir. He said, I made a promise to myself that when I get out of the Navy, I'll never stand in line again. Today's Memorial Day, or Monday's Memorial Day, and, and to a lot of people, Memorial Day is a three-day weekend. Do you know what Memorial Day started out to be, what it was originally called? Decoration Day. It was started by a, a, a group called the Grand Army of the Republic, and it was an organization of Union veterans that had set this day aside to go out to all the Union soldiers who had died in the war and put flowers on their grave. 
How many of y'all have drove through Granbury and seen the big lots with all the flags flying? See, all that started from these guys back there. But when I drive through and look at that, I don't know if some of y'all have looked on Facebook. Yesterday I got invited, a, a buddy of mine called up and they were short of hand. I got to go uh, be involved in a ranch rodeo. I haven't been to a ranch rodeo in years and it was so much fun. I can't hardly walk today, but it was so much fun. <laughs> but I was riding my old white horse and they come to me and asked me if I'd carry the American flag. So... Me and old Dockers went out there and stood as they did the grand entry and brought all of them in. And I stood there, and I took that flag, and I set it up in the center of my saddle and held it high. And I looked at it, and I stared at it as they were coming in. And I got to thinking what that flag represents. Because of that flag, we can gather here today and worship our God without fear of persecution. That flag represents a freedom of over 200 years that was not free. The red in that flag represents the blood of a lot of men and women that was given so that we may meet here today. Today is a day to set aside that we remember that. And as I, I sat there and I looked at it, I can't fathom the number of lives that have been lost that we can endure the freedoms and have the freedoms that we have today. Some of you may have served in the military. Some of you may have lost friends in the military. But it's because of their fight and yours that we're allowed to enjoy the country in which we live in. And there's a lot of people today burning that flag. There's a lot of people today trampling on that flag. And I'm going to tell you what, I am a preacher, not a pacifist, and I dare you to trample on that flag in my presence. Because there's people that gave their lives for that flag. Do we have any servicemen here today and women? If you served in the military, in any branch of the military, Navy, Army, Marine Corps, uh, National Guard, uh, if you served in the uh, uh, Coast Guard, would you please stand up? Air Force? I said military. If you are a parent of someone that served in the military, or if you have a child serving in the military today, please stand up. There was a post that I seen on Facebook as they were loading a soldier into a hearse. It says, I don't know you, but I am grateful for you. Folks, I don't know all of you. But believe me, from the bottom of my heart, I am grateful for all of you. Thank you so much for your service. This is my Facebook sermon. How many of y'all seen the joke on Facebook about Memorial Day, the little cartoon? There's a little cartoon on there that showed two families. One of them's over here barbecuing in the backyard. They're like, the dad's like, man, I wish every Monday was Memorial Day. And they're just barbecuing away. And right beside it, it shows a family staring at a mantle with a folded flag sitting on the mantle above the fireplace. And it says, to some it is. Folks, that really hit me. To some people, every day is Memorial Day. They have lost the loved one that has paid the ultimate sacrifice. So I got to thinking about memorials. And I got to thinking about just what a memorial is. You know, there's all kinds of memorials. I was looking and researching, and Wikipedia says a, mor a memorial is an object in which serves as a focus for memory of something, usually a person who has died or an event. Webster says... Something that keeps remembrance alive as a monument. Something as a speech or a ceremony that commemorates a keepsake or a memento. Some of the most famous memorials to this country today is the Lincoln Memorial and the Jefferson Memorial that are in our capital. Two of the great men of our country. But do you know each and every one of us is going to have a memorial when we pass? 
Do you know that? Each and every one of us has a memorial. It's a little piece of marble that they put at the head of your grave. We're all going to get one. We're all going to have a memorial. We're all going to end up there. And I wonder, since memorial is, a, is, is something to make us remember, when they stand and look at mine, what is my memorial going to be? What are they going to remember about me? What legacy did I leave? What impact did I have? When they look at that, are they going to say, boy, I'm sure glad he's gone. Are they going to look at that and see and remember that, that there was lives that was touched and things that was changed? You know, our children look at us, most of them look at us when we have gone with hurt and loss of a parent. But I want to know what your coworkers are going to think of. What your neighbor is going to say. What memorial did you leave to the world? If you brought your Bibles with you today, we're going to be in Psalm 71. We're going to read two verses, verse 17 and 18. And this is David talking about he, in, in his psalm. And, and what he speaks here is, this is the memorial I want remembered. This is what I want of me. This is what I am going, going want people to look back and say. And these are simple things. These are no great things. You know, have you ever seen some people's tombstones and all, man? I mean, they're like a big old huge deal. I mean, you wondered, my goodness gracious, what did it cost? And I mean, uh, we had a buddy that uh, his wife had passed before him, our old friend out in West Texas, and he had a Bible over her name, and he had a, uh, a old black uh, horse that was his favorite horse his whole time working cattle named Blackjack, and he had Blackjack engraved over top of his name. And this thing was huge, and it was big, but yet right beside it was just a little small plaque and I want you to understand, it's not going to be the size of the tombstone they put there. It's going to be the story behind it that's going to be the memorial for you. It's not going to be the money that was spent in a big funeral or a big parade or a big party or if they do a memorial team roping for you. That's not going to be the important thing. The important thing is going to be what they remember about J.J. Jennings as a father and a husband, as a pastor, as a child of God, what do they remember? What is my, rem my memorial left? What is it going to say to the world? Because all of us are going to leave that, and all of us are going to have an impact on some people that nobody else does. How many of y'all have had some special people in your life that have just left a mark on you, good or bad? That's their memorial. Good or bad, it's their memorial. And the only person that had control over that was them. Psalm 71, 17 and 18 says, Oh God, you have taught me from my youth, and to this day I declare your wondrous works. Now also, when I am old and gray-headed, oh God, do not forsake me. Until I declare your, str uh, until I declare your strength to the generations, your power to everyone who is to come. David says, I want to be a good student. He said, God, you've taught me. I want to be a good student. Is your memorial going to be see that you were a lover of the Lord, that you were a lover of God, that you walked this way? <laughs> Understand this, too. I'm not saying that, <laughs> well, my granddaddy went to church every Sunday. That's great. That's great. My grandmama was in church every time the doors opened. Matter of fact, when I was a kid, I had a drug problem. Every time they opened the doors, I was drugged to church. That's wonderful. But let me ask you, when you were outside of church, did it reflect the teachings that you learned in church? I've said this, and I'll say it again. If we're not willing to teach our children, the world is. Believe me, they're standing in line waving their hands. If they're not willing to show them the Bible in the way and leave a mark on their lives, the Bible says that if we raise a child up in the way, he won't stray from it. He won't forget it. Everybody says, oh, I don't know. You ever talked to about a preacher's son? Most of the most craziest guys I ever met was a preacher's son or a preacher's daughter. 
The Bible doesn't say that they're not going to make mistakes. The Bible doesn't say they're not going to sin. The Bible doesn't say they're not going to stray away. The Bible says that they will always have the memorial. They will always have the knowledge. They will always know those things in which God expects of them. Whether they do them or not, I don't know. But that is the mark, the memorial that we can leave, that we were a good student. I would love for people to look at me when I'm there uh, in the casket or whatever Terry's going to do with me. <laughs> I don't care. To buy. The Bible says to be absent from the, Bible, the body is to be present with the Lord. This is but a vessel. When my soul is done here, you all can do with it as you want because I'll rejoice because the Bible says at the moment of that time, I'll stand in the presence of our God. But are people going to say about me that I believe the Bible so much that I studied it, that I know God's Word so much that I was interested and driven enough to read it and grow in it? Because, see, a lot of us get happy with just coming and finding Jesus, and once we found Him and we know Him, we're cool. You ever met that friend? You got him, and he's more like an acquaintance, and they're okay and they're nice, but you don't want to invite them to the house? You know, yeah, they're all right. They're a whole lot of fun when they're at somebody else's barbecue, <laughs> But I want to be that guy that you say, you know what, that guy loved God so much. He wanted to be more like him every day. That you know what, they can say, you know what, there goes a student of Jesus. That's one of Jesus. You know, that's all the disciples kept calling Jesus over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Teacher, 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 teacher. Teacher, teach me. Teach us to pray. What should we do? How do we do this? Teach me, teach me, teach me. I would love for my mortal to say that I was so hungry. How many of y'all like to study for tests? <laughs> Who just graduated? Did we have one just graduate? Surely you like to study? Yeah. Get ready. You're going to college. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a, a study mania. But one of the things David said here is, in my memorial, what I'd like to have left of me is that he was a student of God. He tried to learn from God and act like God. He tried to be Jesus' brother. He tried to do everything that he could. He tried to learn all the ins. He tried to learn all the outs. He tried to know exactly where he stood. So many times we're just satisfied where we are. So many people are satisfied coming here on Sunday. Man, I tell you what, get into your Bible. I've been re reading the book of Joel. And I tell you what, God's just been revealing. I mean, it's, that book has got like four chapters in it, okay? We're not talking a mega book here. Yeah, I talked to my daughter, our son, the other day. He talked about his, his wife, our daughter-in-law, is on her fourth book. This book has 1,800 pages. He says she's read half of it in like three weeks. He said, Dad, do you ever read? I said, I haven't read 1,800 pages in my entire life. But I love reading this. I get fascinated by this because you know why? As a student, I grow and become better. I learn and I'm wiser and I'm smarter. Right? You know, the other thing that we read in the scripture right here, he said, not only do I want to be a good student, he said, I want to be a good teacher. We're supposed to take what we've learned and learn all we can so that we can pass it on. How many of y'all seen the movie Pay It Forward? Moms and dads, that is a requirement from God that you raise your children to know it. The book of Deuteronomy says that you teach it to them, you put it on their, for, on their forearm, that you speak when they get up and you tell them when they go to bed and when they come in and when they go out and when they're walking down the road. You tell the children the things that you've learned from God. So many times as parents, we're real good at telling them. How many of y'all ever said this? Do as I say, not as I do. You've said, you've said that, or you've said, had that said to you, or both? Both. Yeah. I was a big fan of that when my kids were little. I said, why? Because I told you so. But, Dad, you want to be a good teacher to your children? You want to be a good teacher to your neighbor? You want to be a good teacher to your coworker? Live out what you've learned. Put it into practice. You know what? A whole lot of knowledge up here don't do you any good if you can't put it into practice. You've heard me say this before. You can have the best toolbox in the world. Every tool you could ever think of and imagine. And if you keep it locked, it doesn't do you one stinking bit of good, does it? 
If you just open it up and look at them every once in a while, it doesn't do you any good, does it? It's when you use them that they come in handy, right? When you have that right tool for the job. Well, if you've been a good student, now you can be a good teacher. How many of y'all have taught your sons or daughters how to do stuff? Sew, cook, work on cars, dig fence posts? Absolutely. You learned how. My granddaddy showed me and I showed my sons and my daughters. I was a student of my granddad and became a teacher of my children. See, the Bible says you want a great memorial, you should have one of two things. Everybody should have a Paul. Paul is a teacher. You should have a Paul in your life, someone that's spiritually ahead of you, that can bring you forward, that can teach you. And every one of you should have a Timothy. See, Paul had a Timothy. Timothy was his student. He was a young preacher that he taught. You know what Paul's legacy was? He was a man of God. He was a great student of God and a great teacher of God's Word and God's ways. That's Paul's legacy. He says, I do it unto death. He went all the way into Rome to be brutally murdered, still teaching everything that he had learned from God. Never stopped. He said, you want a memorial? I want to be remembered like a Paul. Everywhere that guy went, man, he was trying to tell me about Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Every free time he had, he was learning. You know, Paul went off and studied. Jesus went off and prayed by himself. He went in and learned from God and come back and taught the disciples. Learned and taught. What a memorial. What a memorial that is. But we can be a great student of God and an awesome teacher of God. Because I'm going to tell you this, guys. You can't teach what you don't know. You might be able to get through math class that way, but you ain't going to get through life that way because it'll surely find you out. Just as as Moses told the people they were getting ready to go into the promised land, you know, all the the tribes that were there to help Israel, they were going to receive this side of the Jordan, but first they had to go help Israel fight in the promised land to help them get it. And he said, look, this land's going to be yours. It's a promise of God. Moses said, there's a million of them. Whether you go over there and fight, I won't know. I won't know how many of you went, how many of you didn't, but know this, your sin will find you out. You cannot hide from God. So you can act like the best Christian in the world here on Sunday. You can come to your Bible study, bring your nice Bible and your son, sit down, have your casserole with your Baptist, (laughs) have tortillas and tacos with your cowboy church. Be there every Monday, every Tuesday. I don't want people to look at me and say my memorial was that I was in church every Sunday. He always went to church. I want to look at me and say that he's a student of God. He loved God so much he wanted to learn everything he could about him. And once he learned it, he wanted to teach others. That's what I want my memorial to be. Parents, you can give no greater gift to your children than if the grandparents, if mom and dad ain't doing it, step in there and do it. Do I have to go to grandma's house? All we're going to do is hear about Jesus. Yes, you have to go. Do as I say, not as I do. You know, God loved us so much that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The only way that we can experience and know it is we've got to come into a relationship with him. And to come into that relationship, we've got to have knowledge of him. How did you get to, in the relationship of your wife or your husband? You met them and you found out more about them and you studied them and you knew and you learned their likes and their dislikes and all. And you're like, I can put up with that for a while. <laughs> or as most women do, goes, I can fix that. <laughs> I can fix that right there. Yeah, how's that working out for you? <laughs> Some things are just broke. You ladies are going to have to figure that out. God says, I want to have a relationship with you. I want you to be a student of mine. But more than anything, I want you to be a child of mine. I had this conversation not too long ago with an individual. And they give me this funny look. I said, I want you to know that everybody is a creation of God. But not everybody is a child of God. 
He's like, huh? We're all children of God. No, ma'am. See, someone's done you a great misjustice and not taught you the word of the Bible. The word of the Bible says this, that to be a child of God, you have to be adopted into the family of God. See? And it has to come at a price. Anybody ever know anybody that adopted somebody? It costs a lot of money to adopt somebody. There's a high price to be paid for the adoption. Here's the greatest thing. If you want to be a child of God, you want to be adopted by God and be in the family of God. The Bible says to be a joint heir with Jesus Christ, evenly with Jesus Christ. That price has already been paid. That adoption price has already been paid. Jesus Christ paid it on the cross. He paid it in full. So I don't know where you stand with God today, but I know this, the Bible says that if you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, confess with your mouth that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. By no other name, by no other way, by no other guru, by no other book, by no other feel-good thing, can you ever get to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, that no one comes unto the Father but through me. I've done paid your adoption. All you got to do is accept it. I say this many times, Jesus went this far. He won't go any farther. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He who opens the door, I'll come in and dine with him and he with me, and he will be my child. Do you need to open a door today? It's simple. It's free. All you got to do is ask. Would you rise with me? Dear Lord, we love you and we thank you. I just pray that our memorial, we would strive today, that our memorial would be that we would be like Paul, that we would be a great student of you and your word and your ways, that we could be a great teacher, that we could grow in our relationship with you, that we would have life more abundant, that we would have more joy and comfort and peace, that we could teach to our children, to our neighbors, to our co-workers, to our enemies, to all those around us. Lord, that our memorial would be that we were a lover of you and you were a lover of us, that our life centered on you. Father, no greater memorial can we leave this world into that one than that legacy of a godly man, a godly wife, a godly mother, a godly woman, a godly grandma, a godly grandpa. And Lord, if there's someone here today that has kind of slipped away and kind of got away from the memorial and are kind of maybe putting a little tarnish on, on that memorial, Lord, I pray you would draw them back today, that today that they would ask, Lord, forgive me that they would return back to you and start building that shiny memorial, that God memorial. And Lord, if there's one here today that had no idea that you loved them so much that you were willing to adopt them into the family, that they had no idea that they weren't just automatically a child of yours, that they, they had to actually choose you. Lord, today they're making a decision to want to start a new memorial, to tear down the old one, and build a new one in a relationship with you through Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that they would say this prayer. They say, Lord, I understand now that I've been building the wrong memorial. I understand now that for me to, to be on the right track, to be in that relationship, to be adopted unto you, that I need to believe that Jesus was you in the flesh and that he walked this earth to be my guide. And I do. I believe. I believe that he went to the cross to pay my debt, a debt I couldn't pay that they buried him in a tomb, and three days later he defeated death not for himself but for me, that I may never die. Lord, I call upon you now to be the Lord and Master of my life. And I ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen.